Hi guys, welcome back to K-World. Today I'll be summarizing the 2023 movie The Point Man. With a plot spoiler alert, let's get to it. The movie begins with the incident of South Korea joining the war to fight against the Taliban and sending their non-combat troops to Afghanistan. During this time, despite the travel ban, 23 South Korean Christian missionaries sneak into Afghanistan for short-term missionary work and get captured by Taliban militants. They take the missionaries as hostages and demand the South Korean government pull his troops out of Afghanistan and release 23 Taliban prisoners within 24 hours if they want the hostages released. Jung Jae-ho, who is a Korean foreign ministry diplomat, upon learning of the capture, urges the media to refer to the hostages as volunteers instead of missionaries so that the hostages would not be killed. Jae-ho, the vice minister, and Park John rak go to Afghanistan to meet the foreign minister to arrange the release of the Taliban prisoners. Park Day sik who is an NIS agent, also gets sent to Afghanistan to help with the mission, but Jae Ho shows no interest in working with Day sik The Afghan foreign minister refuses to release 23 prisoners in exchange for the hostages, just as Day sik predicts, and offers to help the Korean government free the hostages in other ways. Day sik decides to convince the Jirga, which is a council of Afghan tribal leaders, as they are the ones who decide all issues in Afghanistan. If they tell the Taliban to release the prisoners without a bargain, they would. So Daesik decides to meet the key tribe leader of the Jirga with the help of a Korean immigrant interpreter Abdul Karim Qasim. One hour before the deadline, Jae Ho, the vice minister, and Park John Ruck go to meet with the Taliban and find themselves in the middle of a suicide bomber. Jae Ho informs the government to pull out the Korean troops, as the Taliban demand, since the Afghan government refused to release the prisoners, so the Taliban's extended the deadline by another 24 hours. Jae Ho rushes back to see the foreign minister again. To his surprise, he learns from the foreign minister that they could pay a ransom for the prisoners and get them released, but the vice minister refuses to do so, because that would be bargaining with the terrorists. They wait for the decision of the Jirga upon learning of Day Sik's mission to meet them. So Jae Ho also arrives at the meeting to meet with the Jirga leader. Day Sik and Jae Ho manage to convince the leader that the hostages are volunteers and impress the tribe leader, who agrees to help them release the Korean hostages. With the influence of the Jirga, the Taliban agree to release the hostages. Meanwhile, a TV station broadcasts a talk show revealing that the hostages are missionaries and that they even wrote their wills before flying into Afghanistan. Even though the foreign ministry tries to stop the broadcast, the TV station refuses, arguing that the Taliban can't understand Korean. The tribal chief becomes angered upon learning that the hostages are missionaries and that Day Sik and Jae Ho lied to them about being volunteers. As a result, the negotiations to release the hostages fail. With no other option, Jae Ho informs the foreign ministry that the only way to secure the release of the hostages is by paying ransom. Meanwhile, they receive information that one of the hostages has been killed. Five days after the kidnapping, the Taliban releases a video claiming that they never asked for ransom and that the only way for the hostages to be released is if the Afghan government releases Taliban prisoners within 24 hours. Otherwise, they threaten to start killing the hostages. Abdullah, a British Taliban broker, meets with Day Sik with a list of inmates from a prison in Ghazni to be released in exchange for the hostages. Day Sik and his team decide to break into the prison and help the prisoners escape, disguising it as a prison break, as the central government has less control over the Ghazni area and prison breaks are quite frequent. Abdullah earns their trust by connecting with the Taliban and putting one of the hostages on the phone, offering to help them for $2 million to release the prisoners. Four hours before the deadline, Jae Ho and his team meet with Abdullah with the money, and Abdullah releases the prisoners. He then hands over an address to Jae Ho, which is the location of the exchange. Just then, Jae Ho receives a call from the vice minister informing him that the background check Jae Ho requested from the British government before going into negotiations with Abdullah states that he is a fraud. Even though Abdullah tries to run away with the money, Day Sik manages to chase after him and stop him, retrieving the money. Shortly after, they receive a call from a Taliban commander who calls one of the hostages as they listen and extend the deadline. The Korean foreign minister also arrives in Afghanistan. Despite Jae Ho and Day Sik's opposition, they decide to launch a military operation, even though it means the hostages would be killed. As a result, the minister demands Jae Ho to step down from the operation and return to Korea. So Jae Ho contacts the chief presidential secretary and asks for permission to have a face-to-face -face negotiation with the Taliban. To Jae Ho's disappointment, the secretary tells him to follow the foreign minister's orders. However, he receives a call from the president instead, who informs him that the government would not be able to provide him with security, and he would have to go to the negotiations on his own. Jae Ho agrees to it, and the Taliban agrees to the negotiations. Only Jae Ho and Qasim were taken into the meeting by the Taliban. At the beginning of the negotiations, Jae Ho manages to secure the release of two hostages, and informs the Taliban commander that the government is not ready to release the Taliban prisoners. In response, the Taliban commander changes their terms, demanding that all the Taliban prisoners be released by midnight. 
Otherwise, they threaten to kill a hostage every hour. So the Korean government decides to launch the military operation. When the bombing starts, J-Ho argues that it is not a rescue mission, but a mop-up operation, and not only the hostages, but also the Taliban members in the room would die when the operation starts. So the only way to stop it is for the commander to agree to a deal. The commander agrees to release the hostages for $20 million and for the Korean troops to leave Afghanistan within a month. When the hostages are released and Jae Ho and Qasim arrive to be released, the Taliban demands that one of the Koreans should stay behind for them to leave to ensure the Taliban's safety. When the Taliban tries to keep Qasim, Dae Sik takes his place and stays behind. Three months after their return, Jae Ho receives a call from Dae Sik and Qasim, informing him that they are safe in Afghanistan. The movie ends with another press conference announcing that a Korean ship has been kidnapped in the Indian Ocean. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.